In this video, we're going to learn how to solve the FizzBuzz problem in Python. So FizzBuzz is a popular coding interview question, and the problem goes like this. Write a program that prints the numbers from 1 to 100, but for multiples of 3, print Fizz instead of the number, and for the multiples of 5, print Buzz. For numbers which are multiples of both 3 and 5, print FizzBuzz. So the multiples of 3 are the numbers 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and so on. And the multiples of 5 are the numbers 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and so on. And there's going to be some numbers like 15 that are multiples of both 3 and 5. In terms of how we can check for a multiple, if we divide 3 by a number and there is no remainder, that number is a multiple of 3. And it's going to work the same way with 5. So the FizzBuzz sequence should look like this. We would have 1, 2, and then instead of 3, we would have Fizz, because 3 is a multiple of 3. Then 4, and then Buzz instead of 5, Fizz instead of 6. And it would just continue on like this. At 15, we would have our first Fizz Buzz. So let's try to solve this problem now with a Python program. The first thing we'll actually do is just try to print out the numbers from 1 to 100. We'll use a for loop with a range function to do that. We'll say for n in range 1 to 101. And what this will do is run this for loop with n set to 1, then 2, then 3, all the way up to 100. And all we'll do for now is just print out n. So we'll save this and then run the program. And we'll get the numbers from 1 to 100. Next, we'll try to actually add in fizz, buzz, and fizzbuzz in the appropriate places. The first thing we'll add is fizz. So we'll say if n modulus 3 is equal to 0, then we're going to print out fizz. Otherwise, we're going to print out the number n. So this percent sign here is what's called the modulus operator. It's going to return the remainder of n divided by 3. So here we're checking to see if n divided by 3 has a remainder that's equal to 0. If it does, we know that n is a multiple of 3. And in that case, we're going to print out fizz. Otherwise, we're going to print out the number itself. Let's try this version out. We'll save this, run our program, and now we can see for the multiples of 3, we're getting fizz. If we go up here, we see that for 3, we have fizz. For 6, we have fizz. For 9, we have fizz. And so on. So we now have fizz working. Next, we'll add another case for buzz. So we'll say here, else if n modulus 5 is equal to 0, in this case, we're going to print out buzz. So we're using the exact same technique. We're checking to see if when n is divided by 5, it has a remainder of 0. If that's the case, n is a multiple of 5, and we're going to print out buzz in this case. So we'll save it, and again, run a program. And now we can see for the multiples of 5, we have buzz. If we scroll up here to the start, we're going to see that at 5 we get buzz, and at 10 we get buzz, and so on. So now we have buzz working too. So next we'll print out fizz buzz when the number is a multiple of both 3 and 5. And this part here is where sometimes people make a mistake during coding interviews. So what we're going to do is actually put the condition up here. We're going to say if n modulus 3 is equal to 0 and n modulus 5 is equal to 0, then we're going to print out fizz buzz together. And we'll turn this into an else if. So we'll save this and run it. And now we get the complete FizzBuzz sequence. If we scroll up here, we're going to find that at 15, we get our first FizzBuzz, and then again at 30, and so on. And now we've solved the FizzBuzz problem. The mistake that people often make is checking for this condition at the wrong time. So for example, they'll have something like this. If n modulus 3 is equal to 0, print fizz. Else if n modulus 5 is equal to 0, print buzz. Then they'll have this condition as the last else if case. 
The problem with this is that we've already checked to see if n modulus 3 is equal to 0. And if this is true, we'll have printed out fizz. If on the other hand, we had the n modulus 5 is equal to 0 condition first, then we would have already checked to see if n is a multiple of 5. So with this version here, we're never going to actually reach the print fizzbuzz statement. Let's try it out. We'll save this and run our program. And notice we get fizz and buzz, but we never get fizzbuzz. And that's because the print fizzbuzz statement will never be reached if we put the conditions in this order. So that's a common pitfall to watch out for when solving fizzbuzz. And this has been how we can solve the fizzbuzz problem in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.